Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be talking about Leoric, particularly the four common mistakes people make on Leoric, as well as I'll add in a meta build guide to show you what everyone is primarily running. Leoric is considered one of the best off tanks in the game, purely because he can hold his own against a variety of targets, uh, or a variety of solo laners, and he can do a lot when it comes to team fights. He has an extremely powerful engage, uh, that has a very short cooldown, can usually take one person if the enemies are in the process of running away, and take that, get a free kill out of it every 50 seconds, as well as he can reduce a huge portion of the damage the enemies are doing during team fights, making him one of the highest utility solo laners in the game, as well as he is a bit of a bully against other common solo laners like Urel and uh, Blaze, and now, uh, what's his name? Curious. So, Let's talk about some of these common mistakes. The first common mistake that I see way too often is how people deal with his Drain Hope. So, uh, Leoric's Drain Hope is this skill shot ability that makes it to where you will drain off the enemies and you move slower as you're doing it. The problem is, is when you start going against enemies that are even remotely smart, every time you cast it, they're going to be running away. And you stand still while you're casting it, which means it's very easy to dodge. And it's very slow, so even if they just accidentally move in the different direction you're gonna have a hard time landing it which is why i want to show people that if you can land your q first it'll make it so much easier to get your your uh w off because your q will slow them so this is what it looks like you slow them and then you can land it and it's so much easier and you also slow them enough that you can keep up with the w for pretty much the entire duration of the w as well as you could walk up and sometimes even get off a couple auto attacks too so sometimes it looks like this auto attack w and follow them and that's what it could look like and you could go the full duration if i wanted to go into tower range and really bully people out so that's the first major mistake is that people keep trying to do a W without doing a Q first and it, they miss the majority of the times and they're both very long cooldown abilities. So you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of this uh, benefit. Anyways, uh, on to the next common mistake, which is essentially crit focusing. Now, crit focusing is a tool that you can do which essentially means that you will uh, wait out every three attacks, you get a crit. So you pretty much do sweeps twice, uh, and then you get this glowing one, which is a crit. When you get a crit, what I like to do is I like to do the slow, the auto attack, and then do my W, and I get a huge chunk of damage off on the enemies, as well as you can keep auto attacking them throughout all that duration. It's a really powerful tool if you're trying to go against someone and really bully them because that extra crit can do a lot of damage. It gets into the two, 300 damage as the game starts going on. The next thing I want to explain is the correct Entomb combo. So there's a very specific way to where uh, Entomb gets a little bit better and it's essentially based off of using your abilities correctly. So how it works is you need to Entomb someone and then you need to go through and get your healing or else you're going to die while you have the Entomb going. So you do Entomb, you do your heal, and then as you're doing your heal, you use your Wraith Walk. Your heal's going to keep going, your Entomb's going to keep going, but your Wraith Walk's going to make you unstoppable, so you can't be knocked out of the way. You can really lock someone down. Say, for instance, I wanted to get this Alexstrasza. You will Entomb, take a step forward, you do a W, and you do a Wraith Walk. This makes it to where you're draining her and you're making it to where you're unstoppable so she can't push you out. In case you're going against an Alexstrasza and she goes dragon form, if you're not unstoppable, she just pushes you out of the way and then she walks out of the, uh, the Entomb. So making it to where you're unstoppable makes it to where no one can get past you. So again, you have to Entomb and then you have to take a step forward because if you see your hitbox is only right here and it doesn't actually cover the entire thing. Many people can still walk out. So that is why you always Entomb, you take a step forward, you do a W and an E, and no one's going to be able to walk around you. This kind of goes into the build, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but we will get into that uh, as we go further. So that is the Entomb combo. Now I want to show you guys how to correctly wave clear. So I'm going to get rid of Alex Straza, and we're going to refresh this. I'm just going to sit over here. So people get the wave clearing mixed up a lot of times on Leoric. And he has actually really good wave clear now that he has this um, 
this thing. So the first thing you want to do is you want to use a crit on a frontline minion or the enemy hero. Then you position yourself to where you're in the middle of the wave as your, um, your AoE is based off of your location, not the location of what you're hitting. So as long as you're in the middle of the wave and you hit something, you're likely going to be able to get it off. But I try to make sure that the crits are hitting the frontline minions as they have the most health. So you don't want to kill your target that you're swiping off of uh, too early or else you're not going to be able to swipe off of the back line as well. So you can see that's without even using the Neil Peasants, which I do pick up Neil Peasants to speed this up. So Neil Peasants is the same way. Don't use this on just the front minions. I see this happen way too often with Leorix where they walk up to a wave and they'll use Neil Peasants like this and they might not hit everything in the wave. Now in that case we did, but... Uh, simply making sure that you're in the middle of the wave and you can get a Neil Peasants off on the side. One of the, let me set my level to level four and I'll show you how we're doing a lot less damage. So this is actually a lot more important at level four. So when we get into a wave, uh, it essentially looks something like this, where you hit, you do a Neil Peasants, you hit again, and then you get your crit, you hit something in the front, you hit again, you hit again. And that's pretty much your wave. And then you can go to another wave in case you're double soaking, which is one of the benefits of Leoric is that he can double soak as of level four because of the amount of wave clear that he has. And then you can finish that wave and then you can go back up to your first wave. You can really push hard as a Leoric. So that's the biggest mistake or probably the, the mistake that's holding back the most Leorics that seems simple is just wave clearing correctly. So again, what it looks like is I would go into the middle of the wave, I would hit, I would use a Neil Peasants, I would hit again with my swipe, I messed that one up, whatever, um, and then I would get my swipe, another swipe, and then I would go. And so when there's no enemy in the lane, you can clear your lane in usually under four seconds. And if there are people in the lane, then you also want to try to bully them a little bit by using your crits on them, by using your slow, your W. And so against like a common laner, let's say, for instance, you're going against a blaze. And this is kind of like how it would look like if I was going against a blaze using all of these uh Kind of tricks that we've we've gone over so let me wait until he comes in lane so the first thing i would want to do is just kind of bully him a little bit and so i would start off by getting this an auto a w and then i would just auto him while we're in range let me turn off toggle cooldowns and i did half of his health in the initial burst of abilities i would kind of hang out a little bit until my abilities are back up and then once again i would go in auto w and then auto and that's kind of how you'd want to bully him. Now, normally your enemy laner is going to try to exit or get out of your W range. So they're going to start running away this way. Um, and then when the, the laner is gone, then you're going to want to start kind of transitioning to clearing the lane. So whenever you have a crit, I try to engage with the enemy. Whenever you don't have a crit, I try to wave clear. So essentially, I have a crit right now. I would just kind of hang out in this bush. I would Q, auto, W, and then I would kind of follow him around heal, do whatever I need to. And then when I don't have a crit, I would simply be just clearing these waves. And now I have a crit again, so I'd go back on, do this, and then trade again. That's kind of how you'd want to handle it, but it's not always... Don't always follow this pattern because then the enemies are going to realize what pattern is going to happen. They're going to notice you do two auto attacks and they're going to walk away. And then you're going to sit there and you're going to be waiting until you can get a crit and they're never going to take any damage. So try to use this as information of a, of a bait or try to use this to your advantage in somehow. So those are essentially the biggest pieces of the four common mistakes, but I do want to share a few uh, just interesting tips as well as a build. So I, let's, um, let me go over this one tip really quick, which is Entomb, you can be really creative with your Entomb uses. One of the things that I do here and there, let me get an Alarak on our team, um, is the the entomb you can use this in in a lot of creative ways one important one that i like is i like this entomb because they can't get out of it so you can entomb behind a structure and use that to stop the enemies from getting out structures can't be moved so there's really no answer to that problem the next if you see that there's someone on their team that this usually works best if the enemy's in arthas but you can give your ally an Entomb to escape sometimes. So say your ally is low health against something like an Arthas, and an Arthas is permanently slowing him. You can Entomb your ally, and it gets your ally just far enough away that the Arthas' permanent slow doesn't continue, and it allows your ally to get out safely. So using 
Entomb to save allies is actually a pretty cool tool, as well as using your Entomb um, around objects to where you can catch an individual person in a little tight space is also a really cool tool. Uh, Entomb has a ton of creative uses. You should never be limited to like one or two things when you're using Entomb. It's probably one of the most versatile abilities in the game that's just underutilized. And it's such a low cooldown. The most simple way to use Entomb is simply to, if your team is charging into a fight, you simply Entomb the one person that's trying to run away. And in this case, our Alarak is, uh, let's get rid of him. You just Entomb people that are running away. One other pretty simple use for Entomb is when people are running this way, even if you don't have the Entomb to get them to start, like to actually catch them in the Entomb, you can use an Entomb to pretty much block off the entire uh, door. So even people running away from this direction will get caught in the Entomb. There's also Entombs that are used for zoning. If you're trying to grab like a boss here, you can simply just use an Entomb for zoning. And there's also long Entombs in case the zone is a lot bigger. You can zone out the entire area in other methods. So just be creative with your Entomb. It's a very low cooldown ability that has a ton of uses. Those are the mistakes and tips on Leoric. I do want to cover the meta build and explain how it's used. So we are going to set the level at 20 and we will go over this. Level 1 is really whatever tool you want to use for you gaining your life back. Ashen Renewal usually is what the pros were picking as it's something that you can heal a big burst when you truly need it and you can kind of avoid it later. Consume Vitality tends to be one of the best in team fights, while Fealty Unto Death is usually the best when you're going against an enemy laner that tends to beat you in lane as you just gain a lot of free health and mana. So I actually like Fealty Under Death for most situations, but for the sake of the meta build, we're going to be practicing with Ashen Renewal. Then Neil Peasants is kind of a go-to on any map that's going to require you to double soak. And so pretty much this is the majority of the maps, even maps that wave clear might be more important, like Braxis, for example, you want to be able to clear the wave really quickly. And so even on maps that you don't need double soak, but wave clear is still important, Neil Peasants is really good. For the sake of this, we're going to go Neil Peasants. Increased healing allows you to entomb someone, heal, and almost never die while your entomb's going on. Entomb is just my favorite ability in the game. Then we go into level 13, and this is where the damage reduction package comes in. You get Empower Wraith Walk, which means that your duration is increased by 100%, and enemy heroes that come in contact with you uh, while you're using your Wraith take 50, or they deal 50% less damage for 4 seconds. And your Wraith Walk is going to last 5 seconds, so you can hit everyone usually twice, reducing their damage for up to 9 seconds if you do it perfectly. And so you can reduce all of the enemy's damage for up to 9 seconds if you do this perfectly, which is just a really cool tool for winning team fights. Level 16, there's Royal Focus, which means Wraith Walk's uh, increases the damage of your next skeleton swing by 50%, and each enemy hero hit by skeleton swing reduces the cooldown of Wraith Walk by 7 seconds, which means what's normally 14 seconds is now 7 seconds, and you can reduce the enemy's damage for 9 seconds, meaning that effectively, for one whole team fight, you can reduce enemy's damage for 18 seconds. And that's the majority of most quick team fights is that 18 seconds. So if you're reducing their damage by uh, 50%, that's effectively a five versus 2.5, which is a really powerful tool, which is why a lot of people say this is one of the strongest um, utility heroes in the game is because if you can do this correctly, you are making your team have one of the most advantageous fights in the game. So it kind of looks like, and, and don't forget that you also lower the cooldown of this by 50% as long as you hit an enemy hero. So your Q and your E will be on 7 second cooldowns after you get this package. Uh, and then at level 20, we like to get the Entomb will do damage and silence. This makes it to where you can Entomb people who have escapes, like a Hanzo or a uh, Li Ming or anyone who normally can get out of an Entomb. You can Entomb those and they can no longer get out. You will be picking up this and the damage is, is not bad either. So essentially how this works with the Leoric is if you're engaging for your team, you start off with an Entomb, you walk up, you do a W, you do an E, and you reduce everyone's damage... And then when your E is almost over, you get close to the enemies, you do a Q, you do a W, and you do an E. 
And then once again, you're just reducing the enemy's damage the whole time. And then you come back and you kill off the enemies. And when you're done with your Ashen or your, your Wraith walk, let me turn off uh, toggle cooldowns. You'll be Wraith walking for five seconds. Your Q will be off cooldown. <clears throat> and then your Wraith walk will be very close to being off cooldown. And then you just do the whole thing again. So if we were to look at this, let me go down here for a second. So let's uh, toggle cooldowns for just one second. This is essentially how a fight would look. You go like this, you do this, you do this, you reduce the damage of as many people as possible for the longest duration possible, and then you come back, you swipe, you use your E, and you're reducing damage, and while your E's going, your Q's off cooldown, and once again, your Q's back, you use your Q, you use your E, and it just keeps going like this. And you can keep reducing the enemy's dam or da damage pretty much the entirety of a fight, as well as you can also throw in W or yeah W's onto the tanks to just get extra damage off, and that's it. That's essentially how it works. You're just this. You're doing a ton of damage to tanks. You're doing a decent amount of damage to their backline. You're reducing the damage of their entire team, and you can keep it up for almost the entire team fight. While in tomb is pretty much game ending if you can get it on the right targets. That is Leoric. That is how you play him. One of the best solo laners in the game, in my honest opinion. And he's just brutal to deal with. And one of my favorite heroes to play just because of the amount of utility that he has. Thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out my other videos.